So if Satan was going to reach out to you, wouldn't he be more of a country music fan? <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair at all. All right, when we were kids, what were like the biggest things that you were afraid of? Uh, well, nuclear war, right? Yep. Everybody born after 1990 can't even imagine what it was it. like. And Satan, because he was involved in everything. Rock music, mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. daycare centers. Everything was blamed on Satan. And one of the ways that he got into your life, as I had always heard, sure. were messages that were hidden backwards in rock music. I remember my mom I'm scaring the crap out of me saying like, you know, little Susie came home and she got a piece of paper someone gave her with instructions to summon the devil. You don't mess around with that. That's, That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. What is so satanic about backwards messages in music? Because it sounds like nonsense. Yeah. Well, it was started by some Christian fundamentalists in the late 1970s. They said that messages hidden backwards in rock music, if you listen to them, played forwards, these messages would bypass your conscious mind and work their way into your subconscious. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that they base this idea on some double-blind, peer-reviewed science, right? Alistair Crowley. <laughs> the dude who got high at early, sex. Yep, early wrote 20th century. Wrote a bunch century. of nonsense. The Beast. He wrote that in a book. Some Christian fundamentalists ran with it in the late 70s, and suddenly it was everywhere. If you play anything backwards, it does legitimately sound creepy as hell. Yes. And if you told me beforehand, like, hey man, you're about to hear Satan's voice, I'd be freaking out. And yeah. I'm sure I would hear Satan's voice. Well, as Bill Hicks put it, if you're playing a record backwards, making it go, you are Satan. <laughs> now the Beatles popularized it during rain. They were doing it intentionally. Sure. But then people started listening to all of their other tracks and hearing messages. That's where the whole Paul is dead thing happened, right? Precisely. So that was a case of urban legend meeting uh, pareidolia and apophenia. Pareidolia is finding signal where there is no signal, exactly. right? So it's, let's say you got a bunch of clouds, you see the face of Satan in there. Apophenia is interpreting the face of Satan in the clouds to mean that you should go out and murder people. Is that right? Right. With the Beatles, everyone started listening and hearing all of these other things, and it spread everywhere. There was a DJ in 1981 who started playing Stairway to Heaven and saying, no, there is a very clear backwards message. Well, uh, we'll be the judge of this. Oh, yes. I kill a bunch of hobbits every day before breakfast. And, and then, then more I before have... second breakfast. All right, <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Tell me, tell me this is all just coincidence because that definitely sounded exactly like the one little path, my sweet Satan. So here's to my sweet Satan. Listen, yeah. to, here's to my sweet Satan. Here's to my sweet Satan. That clearly was Satan talk right there. And it matched word for word from what I saw. How is that just pareidolia? You're telling me we just found signal and noise? If we were listening to that song backwards without having these words on the screen, mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't hear anything but a bunch of noise. But it's priming. We're being told what we're supposed to hear. And of course we're hearing it because it all adds up. It's capitalizing on two different parts of the brain. It's utilizing those to make you hear something that otherwise you would just hear noise. Classic example is the old woman, young woman, cognitive illusion, right? Whenever they have one group of people who's shown just the old lady, while the other group is shown a version of the picture that clearly depicts a young woman, the two of them will argue insanely because they've been primed for different things. And this video is perfect because it primes you as you watch. So it seems like one way to prove this would be to take something that definitely, definitely has no meaning and ascribe something to it. You got an example? There's a band out of Austin called the Draculas. Yeah. Pull up game ground. Jump to the, the middle. Yeah, I'd love to All right. So let's go ahead and pull it up reversed. So this is the same thing reversed. What section yeah. am I listening Jump to? Jump to 109. Here we go. You know we do. All right, so I heard. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let me try again. Let me try again. <laughs> Yeah, I got nothing. I can make nothing out of that. Okay. Let's do it again, but this time I want you to prime me. What should I expect to hear? Oh, Satan, to the end, you shall last until the end. It's clearly there, right? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me hear that again. <laughs> 
what dark part of your brain <laughs> found satanic lyrics in this? Oh, I find it everywhere. <laughs> you sat down and you're like, okay, I'm just gonna listen for the word Satan. Yeah, that was actually the cue that I was looking for. I found that this morning before I came over here to record. All right, that's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna back mask uh, positive messages like, hey man, you're great. <laughs> In fact, we'll do that on this episode. Yes. Go back and listen again. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We've hidden messages all throughout this episode as we give more work to Brant. Uh, yes, exactly. Do you want to give Brant this power? It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs>